Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Hidetaka Yoshikawa, the chairman and CEO of Takara Belmont. The company is the world's leading maker of chairs for barbershops and salons. Their chairs and other products are bought by customers in roughly 150 countries. In 1962, they created the world's first electric-powered barber's chair, where you could adjust the height with just a push of a pedal. In the decades since, they have continued to drive innovation in both form and function. We asked Yoshikawa about his business strategy, including the secrets behind the company's research and development. In 2016, Takara Belmont opened this permanent showroom in Osaka. On display are the company's products, including its wide range of chairs for beauty salons and barbershops. This is the latest top-of-the-line barber's chair. When it's time to recline for a shampoo, the chair finds the best position automatically. And the armrests can be lowered to the height of the seat, a very useful feature for seniors or people in wheelchairs. It even comes equipped with a heated leg rest. This is a cutting edge salon chair that offers ultimate comfort. It puts your body in a relaxed position, similar to if you placed your legs up on an ottoman. Stress is distributed more evenly throughout the body, reducing the physical fatigue of sitting. When our customers sit in our chairs, it's very important that they're comfortable. If you're at a salon, you can be there for, say, two or three hours, getting a cut, a perm, getting your hair colored. We arrived at that shape as a result of pursuing what's best in terms of ergonomics. And it's very important that it's user-friendly for the beauty technicians. It's not good on stylists' bodies if they have to contort into some weird position. We want it so that he or she can work effectively at any angle around the customer. That's an important point. So our chairs go up and down. You can adjust the angle in small increments, all sorts of things like that. Today, Takara Belmont is the world's leading maker of barber's chairs. But when the Osaka-based firm was started by Yoshikawa's grandfather, Hidenobu, in 1921, it started as an iron foundry. The company later switched to making enameled metalware, and that's when they began receiving orders to make legs for barber's chairs. More and more of these orders poured in, and Hidenobu had a hunch that this could be the key to his company's future growth. He decided that they would make their own barber's chairs. In 1931, their first chair went on sale. They were determined. If they were going to make something, they were going to make something great. In those days, at very fancy places like the Imperial Hotel, the barber chairs were made in America by a company called Koken. So our company basically copied the design of the Koken chairs. And we sold our chairs for cheaper than other companies, almost less than half price. Customers did say they liked our chairs, but maybe they had a long-standing connection or a relationship with another company. There was a period where our products couldn't really break into the market. At first, my grandfather would just go around with a wheeled cart. Wherever it was in the country, he would go and pitch the products that he made himself. That was his philosophy. Our founder was really good at winning people over. He'd go into a dealer's conference or a barber's conference and just strike up friendly conversations with the people there. He was a real people person. He won people over. The company also had a unique strategy that went a long way towards expanding their business. They offered a trade-in system. 
So, say a chair costs 10 or 20,000 yen. They'd buy it, and then two or three years later, they could trade it in and buy a new one. Now, the latest model cost 40,000 yen, twice as much. They'd buy that one. We did a lot of business like that. We bought back the old chair for almost as much as we had sold it, and then sold them a new model, then another model. And once one barbershop got on board with this system, all the other barbershops in the area would do so as well. Soon enough, Takara Belmont had captured more than 80% of the domestic market for barber's chairs. In 1950, they even had the honor of presenting one of their chairs to Emperor Hirohito. In 1956, the company established an affiliate in the United States. At that time, the U.S. barber chair business was dominated by two players, Koken and Pedar. Takara Belmont seemed to be taking on an insurmountable challenge. It was about a dozen years after the end of the Second World War, and I suspect that our potential customers in the U.S. would have had all sorts of issues with buying Japanese products. But our founder believed very strongly that if our products were affordable and they were good, they would sell. That was his conviction. He would load our products into trucks and drive around to where the buyers were. And he couldn't speak English. He would go around and try to talk to people with this broken English. It took a lot of courage, I think. I'd imagine that we received various complaints at first. I think that would only be natural. But we responded immediately, improved our technology, our craftsmanship, and successfully put down strong roots in the United States. Our products were accepted. Even now, there are 30, 40, 50 year old chairs of ours still in use in America. There are a lot of them, actually. So they must be pretty sturdy. In 1962, Takara Belmont unveiled the world's first electric-powered barber's chair. Chairs had always been moved up and down by hand. Now, an electric system drove the process. Even at twice the price of a regular barber's chair, it practically flew off the shelves. Before that, you crank the lever by hand. The barbers would have to stop their work to crank this thing up and down. We wanted to decrease the burden on the barbers. So we came up with a hydraulic system powered by electricity. You could control the chair that way. We sold a lot of these chairs. It seemed like almost overnight, shops across Japan had electric powered chairs. These chairs also sold well in the U.S. from the outset. We even put them in the White House. There's a picture of President Ford sitting in one of our chairs as he's having a meeting with a White House staffer. Our founder would encourage his staff to keep coming up with new ideas for things the world has never seen. He would come up with his own ideas, too. He was always working on something. In 1969, Takara Belmont became the leading seller of barber's chairs in the United States. Then, it embarked on expansion into new countries. It was now making chairs for barber shops and salons on a global scale. The company also came up with innovative products that responded to the needs of barbers and stylists. Here is a shampooing stand that Takara Belmont developed in the 1990s. It was one of the products created during the tenure of Hidetaka Yoshikawa, who became the third generation head of the company in 1989. At our company, we're always talking to our clients, the barbers and hairdressers. They tell us all sorts of stuff, and we take in what they say. We start breaking down the feedback they give us, and from that, we find new ideas. 
Stylists told us that when they shampooed a customer, the station was usually up against a wall, and they had to go around the side. They would bend their body in an awkward way. They had to bend their back like this. It's an unnatural pose. It can quickly lead to lower back problems. It's a condition a lot of stylists have from shampooing their customers' hair this way. So to get rid of this issue, we created something where you could do the shampooing from the back. That way, it's much easier for the stylist. Takata Belmont independently developed a freestanding shampooing bowl. The stylist goes behind the bowl and is able to stand up straight as they wash the customer's hair. Moreover, with the customer in a seated position rather than lying down, it's no longer necessary to lift up the customer's head. But this posed an additional challenge. If the angle of the back support wasn't right, hot water could splash down the customer's back. To solve this issue, they created a chair that could find the ideal angles for the back support and the customer's head. Each part of the chair moves independently of each other. It was determined that the optimum angles for hair washing were 50 degrees for the back support and 20 degrees for the head. We based our work on various ergonomic tests to find the optimum angles. We checked and refined our work and came up with the best position. Being able to shampoo from behind means the stylist's body is in a comfortable position. The stylist can do the work for long periods of time. It's allowed salons to offer full head massages, things like that or say a 30-minute scalp massage for 3,000 yen. So salons have been able to add this great new service to their menu. And the stylists can do the work with less stress on their bodies. I think that's an example of how our products have given birth to something new. Takara Belmont then updated its shampooing stand by making a movable model. You don't want the customer to have to move around, and it's a good thing for the salon. They don't have to set aside space for separate shampoo booths. And it has other uses, like for OBGYNs or at an old folks' home. It has potential in all sorts of situations. That's one advantage this product offers. Takata Belmont doesn't just make equipment for salons and barbershops. The company also produces hair products and even products for Japanese-style beauty clinics, day spas, and nail salons. They have also leveraged their technological expertise at making barber's chairs in fields from dentistry to gynecology. People are always interested in beauty, and they want to be healthy as well. We're thinking very deeply about what we can do in the service of beauty and health, and working towards that goal by creating things that don't yet exist, products at the cutting edge. We can offer new value to our customers. Where there's a will, there's a way. If you don't try something, you'll never accomplish it. People might have all sorts of things they want to become, to do, to achieve. They have hopes and dreams. I believe that by having a strong desire for something, those dreams become achievable. If you have this powerful dream inside of you, you turn it into reality by sheer force of will and determination. If there's something you want to do, push for it. Take action. And then you will find that things will start moving forward. <laughs>